All right, welcome back to a brand new vlog. We've got a very special one today because uh, we're recording from London. Uh, if you guys are not aware, we had a, an event, a student event uh, for my education company a few days back. Incredible event, but we've gone ahead and uh, we've put together the whole School of Ecom team, which is my education company. Tal here, who's our uh, supporting coach and a key pillar in our, <laughs> in our education company, School of Ecom, going in from Arkansas, so quite the trip. But anyways, what we want to do in this vlog is we want to show you behind the scenes on what it looks like to run, to still actively run an agency and also run my education company. Every single person from the team is actively running a successful e-com agency and we take great pride in that because we actually walk the talk. And so we want to show you the behind the scenes on the agency side of things, so sales calls, client calls, uh, you know, piecing together like uh, client strategies uh, on, and all that good stuff. And also the education company side of things, uh, student calls, personalized plan of attacks, um, you know, uh, application calls and all that good stuff. Tal here is also meeting up with a client physically, which is pretty cool because, you know, uh, if you guys know anything about an e-com agency, we barely ever do that, uh, but you know, uh, he's, he's uh, literally like 10 minute walk from here, so he's gonna do that. He's also meeting a student from the program, pretty cool stuff. And so it's gonna be a very juicy one, and without further ado, let's get right into it. What's on the agenda right now, Hemi? So I'm about to uh, jump on a sales call, an early morning uh, sales call. Uh, there's, there's no better way to start the day with, uh, than, uh, than a sales call. Now, a little bit about how I prepare my sales calls. Basically, we have a, a bunch of questions that we ask every single applicant. Um, you know, both for the agency and the education company. And uh, I basically go through the profile, I take notes, uh, a few things that, that stand out to me, the feelings that, that I want to talk to the applicant about or the, uh, the prospect for the agency. And that's going to give me a really good idea as to how the call may go and what direction I may want to take the call. So that's what I'm doing right now. Oh, by the way, before you get into, into all of that, how was the event? The event was good. The event was good. It's been like, what? Two days uh, since uh, since we had the event and uh, still sinking in. I mean, the, the response has been insane. We got pop on, on screen a few, you know, a bunch of the feedback that we got, but that literally doesn't do it justice because uh, in person, just the energy, the feedback that we got was, was was just insane. I think there's something about seeing people physically, uh, people that are on the same journey, people that are shooting for the same uh, goals, right? It just makes it more real. Uh, I feel like most of us are just working from our office, like chipping away every single day at it, and we don't realize that like this is real. Like you know, there's people just like you. Not many people in the world, right? But people just like you who are like-minded people who are looking for you know who want to design the life of their dreams. And th there was just something about the energy in that room. And I think we crushed it. You know, uh, you know, keeping in mind that it was uh, it was less than seven days, right? Uh, that, that we had to plan this whole event in insane venue at the Four Seasons uh, here uh, in a park in uh, London. Insane turnout uh, with 60 plus people, 60 plus agency owners. A lot of them uh, are uh, a lot of them flying in from all over the world. Honestly, it was a dream come true. I, I still, you know, still sinking in uh, that we managed to pull it off and, and that we got the feedback that, that we got. So, pretty insane. How, how did you find the event, Tal? It was, it was incredible. You know, flying in 5,000 miles from Arkansas to meet so many people that I've networked with online before, worked with in the mentorship, and meeting so many new people too, flying in from Iceland. I mean, people flying in from literally everywhere. I had the great privilege to speak in front of a crowd of almost 70 people. And yeah, I mean, overall, it was, uh, it was probably one of the best nights of my agency career so far. Very, very happy I got to be part of it. Yeah, man, the, the fact that people flew in literally just for the event from like Spain, Budapest, Portugal, like everywhere, everywhere. Oh, uh, for it was, sure, it was insane. And, and they, they received so much value. I mean, it was crazy. We had so many guest speakers and, you know, you were giving great talks on uh, creating sales funnels. And I think everyone left the event very, very happy and yeah. just overall learned a whole bunch. I think a lot of people came in just for the, the networking and just the networking and meeting the team and everything was valuable enough. Sure. Then they saw the f***ing presentation and they were like, oh, sh <laughs> you know, I, I was definitely not expecting that uh, because we, we shared some behind the scenes. I literally broke down my revenue streams. I literally broke down how I'm, I'm taking my agency past 200k per month right now. Uh, and, you know, you broke down your, your whole story from going, you know, this guy was like working at a nuclear plant. He has a kid, a yeah. wife. Pretty insane, man. Yeah, from a uh, from nuclear plant EMT to, uh, to to an agency owner and really the networking. I mean, you're, you're, you're the net worth of the people that surround you, right? And being, being amongst all those people just grinding and really out there getting it and making stuff happen. I mean, I feel like a better person just from being around them. Give us one thing and, and you know, you talked about it on, on your presentation, but for those of you who didn't make it out to the event, give us one thing that really helped you go from this person who just didn't really have, I mean, you had a traditional, you know, job at a nuclear plant as a, 
uh, just engineer. It, like, it, it's, all about, <laughs> it's all about taking that first step and getting in motion, even if you don't really know where you're going. Once you have that momentum, you realize, hey, you know, this actually isn't that scary, isn't that hard. And then you've, you've got the inertia to take you wherever you do want to go. So take that first step, even if you're not sure if it's the right direction. Just get in motion. All right, uh, then uh, let's let's get right into the next section of the vlog. No, so the reason we set it up this way versus the other way is because this is much more personalized. So Tal is there doing a support and one-to-one calls. One of the, the key things about the mentorship and one of the reasons why I didn't just do an online course where there's like thousands of students like drinking from the same pond with no personalization, just watching a bunch of videos uh, from their home is because we found that one of the reasons why a lot of people don't get results is they don't have the right guidance. Maybe they do have the right guidance, but, but, but they don't know how to execute it. Or maybe they do have the right guidance, they know how to execute it, but they don't know how to overcome the obstacles that are an inevitable part of the process, right? And so we found that when we have a very fast uh, and agile feedback loop, when we can overcome the roadblocks for students very, very quickly, then that leads to incredible results and accelerated results because they're not just you know waiting for a full month or you know, a bunch of weeks not knowing how to overcome the obstacle. And quite frankly, a lot of people just give up because they're like, I don't know how to overcome this. Like this is frustrating and all that stuff, right? So we can get rid of that. And that is why in the mentorship we have not only a lot of one-to-one -one time with me, the students have a lot of one-to-one -one time with me, but we also have Tal uh, doing a lot of uh, supporting one-to-one -one calls. Um, a guy who's actually actively running his agency day-to-day, -day, a six-figure plus agency. And I'm gonna go and, and see how the call went uh, once he's done. So the problem that we were talking about, and honestly something we see a lot of agency owners out there in the industry do is like personalizing their emails too much with all these personalized lines, and it's just not scalable that way. Instead, you can actually personalize to the industry, to the, the sub-niche, and you know, when founders read that, they're like, holy crap, you know, they're talking about my competitors, they're talking about all this value they're gonna give me, and then you know, as, as they work, uh, as they go through your funnel, they become very, very warm, and oftentimes, you know, that's how we book meeting friends. So it's all about not personalizing, but personalizing to, to a specific category within a specific sub niche. So let's just say you're doing nutrition, right? And then you're personalizing two supplement brands, and maybe you have a hundred uh, supplement brands in there, and you're talking about their competitors, the way they do business, and a bunch of things that are specific for supplement brands, and it actually comes off as much more authentic than just a personalized first line, which is like, it literally tells uh, the person you're reaching out to that, it is automated just by its nature because everyone does personalized lines and everyone tries to like seem like it's not automated, it seems like it's it's not cookie cutter. And by doing that, it actually does look cookie cutter, right? And the other thing that, that I'm sure you spoke about um, was the offer, right? Which is like one key component that people don't really think about. It's just the offer is not, not good enough, right? Well, yeah, you definitely need an offer that resonates with your audience and something that's gonna give them value, right? Give them a reason to really be excited to hop on that call with you. And that's not, hey, like, let me tell you about how I can sell you my services. It's like, hey, I'm gonna provide value to you and tell you how you can improve your business and bring in even more customers. Yeah, we're gonna cover X, Y, Z, make it super specific, not just, you know, let's jump on a call and, you know, see how we can work together. No, oh, absolutely. You know, a lot of people just start speaking about marriage before even talking about a first date, before even talking about why it's a good idea to go on a first date and why, you know, like a first date would be of value to them. And so, yeah, offers is a big, big thing that, that we see a lot of agency owners, especially, you know, people that come into the program just really mess up because most offers out there just suck. So, uh, that's cool. Let's do this. Let's do it. What are you up to, Jaime? Okay, just uh, wrapped up the plan of attack personalized call with uh, one of uh, my mentees. Actually, it's two two uh, founders, um, so two partners actually, uh, Sam and Sol from Australia. If you guys are watching this, <laughs> big up. But uh, essentially, we had our plan of attack, our uh, personalized pl uh, plan of attack, a 90 day plan of attack call. And what that is is basically we have a proven system, right? We have an engineered process that has been meticulously engineer it, right? Every single phase of it so that by the end of the 90 days, you've, you've got a very, very specific result. You've got uh, an, agency, an agency that has true longevity, that uh, is making money, that has clients, right? However, we like to add the personalization all throughout because we know that our students are unique in their way. You've got your own strengths, you've got your own weaknesses, right? Uh, people are at different stages of, of the journey, okay? And so what my mentees have is they have a one hour uh, call where I craft a personalized plan of attack within our framework for them specifically. Uh, knowing their situation, knowing what they've been through in the past, knowing exactly what their strengths and weaknesses are. And so I tell them like, hey, I think you should be, you should be doing this fast and I think you should be doing this in the fast week, the second week, the third week, the fourth week, right? And so after this call, they have a very clear plan of attack within that framework that we've created that is personalized to them. And um, 
we've seen massive, massive success uh, with this. Uh, you know, having that personalized plan of attack from the very get-go, so they can get right into it and they can get a results in an accelerated fashion. So that is that for the personalized uh, plan of attack uh, call with uh, Simon Soul. If you guys are watching this, let's go ahead and crush it and uh, let's get right into the next section of the day, which is a lot of uh, sales calls. So uh, I had a, a very interesting uh, sales call with a potential client for the agency, uh, this company called Minta. Um, they have a, a, a very cool SaaS company. So they actually came from my organic uh, funnel, one of the things that I teach about in, in, my, uh, in my mentorship. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to kind of share uh, with you guys, uh, for those of you running your agency and watching this video, maybe taking sales calls, is the fact that I always have a notebook and a pen in hand. And the reason why I do this, right, and, and this will be a good sales lesson that I've learned over the years is the fact that what I'm taking down is not so much facts. Um, it's not so much um, like specific data points, right? It's, it's mainly the pain points and the the main, um, essentially the, the main pain points, triggers, right? And benefits that they're looking to get out of a partnership and a pos uh, possible collaboration with me. And the reason why I say that is because most people, when they pitch something, they pitch this, right? Like they pitch a candle, right? Uh, however, when I pitch a candle, right? When I when I do it on a sales call, I don't pitch a candle because what I'm what I'm selling is not a candle, right? A candle will mean different things depending on the person you're speaking to, right? A candle will be a catalyst for an incredible productive environment. A, a candle will be um, a, a central experience for a lot of people, right? A candle will be a beacon of light in a, a, a hazy and you know, a dark room, right? A candle will be a vibe. A candle will be, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, setting the mood. Uh, a, a candle will be a way to relax, to, um, you know, prep for the next day, to wind down. A candle will be, you know, I, I could go on for, for, you know, I could go on and on, but my, my main point is the fact that a candle will be different to uh, different people. And the way you sell a candle to someone is, you know, it really depends on what they're looking to get out of the candle, right? And so, what I'm mainly doing with a notebook and a pen in hand is just understanding what they want out of the candle, right? Do they want, um, you know, were they burned by an, uh, an agency that wasn't transparent with, uh, you know, with reporting and that just kept them in the dark? If that's the case, I'm going to speak a lot more about my reporting protocols, about my communication systems with my team, etc., etc. If they don't care about that and they've shown literally zero interest in that and that's not a pain point of theirs, right? I may not even mention that. I may go harder on the systems and processes that we use to get them results. My point is that depending on what they're looking to get out of the partnership, depending on their pain points, the pitch will be different. It's not about you know talking about all that all that you do, right? And 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 you know the report protocols and the and all this stuff, right? It's about pitching exactly what they want to hear um, and exactly what you can deliver on. Um, so hopefully that is of value. Make sure that you take down the pain points and really dig deep, right? Uh, don't just have surface level conversations. Really dig deep uh, to to be able to actually take down pain points. And if you don't have pain points going into the pitch, it means that you haven't done a good enough job in asking the tough questions, in getting uh, uncomfortable in in, in, in in the questioning, right? Ask those tough questions, ask those, uh, you know, dig a little bit deeper, right? To get down to the pain points so that your pitch is that much more effective. And the final thing, uh, and one of the reasons why I say that is because a lot of people in sales, they are, they get hit with an objection at the end of the sales um, call, right? Because they didn't do the, the right digging, right? And so maybe they go into the pitch and they mention all the things that they do and all the things that their offer does, right? Uh, and none of those things are crafted and personalized to what the prospect is dealing with. And then they get hit with an objection at the end of the sales call, right? Like for example, oh, but you know, my other agency did this and we hated this and you just mentioned that you do, or, you know, and, and how are you gonna overcome this and et cetera, et cetera. And that's simply because they haven't gotten deep in the questions, they haven't done the right digging. Uh, so I'll, I'll start off now, but make sure that you craft your pitch personalized to their pain points and uh, make sure that you, in your pitch, you make it very clear that this offer, right? And what you're pitching them solves their pain points and gets them to their desired outcome. All right, so we're just doing uh, a little tonality training, uh, just fixing a few things that I overheard on the sales calls. One of the the, the key things about uh, the, I mean, sales is tonality, right? Which is something that is so underestimated. Uh, so what do you think of the tonality and well, the, the, the tonality being training? In this, being in this house the past you know, week in London with you has just taught me so much about sales and, and, and tonality and 
yeah, definitely have come a long way. Still got a long way to go, but absolutely. Like your body language, the way you phrase things, the way you frame things is absolutely everything in sales. It's the difference between you know, closing that client for $5,000 a month or walking home empty handed. Well, what's your biggest takeaway when it comes to like the, the training that we've done and, and the work that we've done at Tonality and body language? I mean, emphasis is key, right? Like, and mm. I, I'm typically like, you know, back in Arkansas, I'm a very low energy person, very calm, but I need to learn when to emphasize certain aspects to really drive that point home and leave the person I'm talking to with the message I always intended to give them, which sometimes before was lost in just, you know, my, yeah. <laughs> when, when I didn't emphasize it. No, I think even just now, like, I mean, I can definitely see an improvement. And yeah, you know, it's, it's remembering that people don't remember what you told them, but they remember how, how they made you, how you made them feel. I've, I've definitely struggled with tonality myself when I started out, right? And I and when I got it fixed, I'm still learning, I'm still a student, right? But when I got it fixed and when I saw that my tonality was pretty damn good, uh, I saw a big impact on myself. And the reason why I say that is because most people just have, you know, monotonous tonality or, or if they have little, you know, ups and you know picks and troughs of tonality it's not it's just not enough right and at the end of the day you can't just vomit out a bunch of information into a prospect right it's about emphasizing the right things and emphasizing the things that you want them to remember right and also making them feel in a certain way right so a lot of people say something but they don't attach an emotion to that thing right at the end of the day framing is all about attaching an emotion to what you just said right because you're basically telling the client how they should feel about something right the same way that for example when i do when i when i say i don't do online courses instead i do a mentorship right because a mentorship is a completely different approach and the cool thing about mentorship is that it's not just a bunch of videos that you're watching from your home, right? It's, it's that personalization, is that uh, tailored element because we understand that everyone is unique in their own way, right? That is tonality at work because I'm saying like, hey, courses, because I'm framing courses in a, in a negative way because I truly believe that they're not the right way to go. And then I'm framing uh, the mentorship, the coaching programs, other things in a complete different light. And I'm attaching a little bit of an emotion to it, right? And so I think framing through tonality and body language is absolutely massive. And I think it's, it's one of those things that like people obsess with over like what to say and the right script uh, when it comes to sales uh, so much. And I do think these things are important, but I think tonality and body language is a way stronger leverage than, than those uh, other things. So I'm glad that, you know, especially uh, it's, it's, it's incredible to do it one-to-one -one, uh, in real life. And uh, I'm glad we, we can do it. To, to meet a student and a client right now. So I'm gonna go get to explore a bit of London, do some networking. And normally, you know, we don't have to meet our clients because we work with clients from all over the world. But since I'm only a 10 minute walk away, why not go meet them, see what they're all about, learn a bit about how to make their products and make that connection that's gonna last years to come. It's yeah. pretty surreal, right? The fact that like, I mean, you're in Arkansas, which is like yeah. in the middle of nowhere in the US. <laughs> uh, and you have this London client and you literally signed him, what, like a week, two weeks ago? Yeah, yeah very, very, very new. And uh, when I told him I was coming to London, he was very impressed. So he's gonna get to see that I'm a real person. I'll get to see he's a real person. Yeah. And again, uh, um, yeah, it'll be good look for at that, the Look at that outfit, looking good. <laughs> After I meet the client, I'm gonna go meet a student, have some coffee, do some work, just uh, connect with them, talk about their agency and how they're, how they're working to improve. Yeah, the, the, the thing about, I mean, the mentorship, and I've, I've, we've mentioned this a bunch of times, is that we have genuine relationships and, conversa and, and connections with our students. Like we, it's not, you know, one in thousands and thousands of students, like we know their case, you know, we, we know them case by case, right? And, and we know exactly yeah, like where they're at. The students, we have, I have individual relationships with each of them and we, we work through things together and it's great to build that rapport and even you know, meet them in person. Right? Yeah. And, and, have a good time. and the results are way better and seeing that impact like in person is, is it must be. Uh, yeah. Everyone's different. So when you have that level of one-to-one -one intimate time with somebody that's been there and done what you want to do, that's when you can really see the results just skyrocket from that. All right, I envy you. Good luck with, uh, with the client and the, the student meetup and uh, let us know how it goes. All right, see ya. All right, just got done meeting Francesco. We had uh, we got some work done, had some lunch. Here he is, everybody. Hey, everyone. Uh, Francesco was at the event on Saturday. What was your main takeaway from that? What do you want people to know about it? Yeah, so first of all, it was a great event. Uh, honestly, it was you know, also meeting like-minded people in the industry. Uh, finally got to meet Tal, a good friend of mine, and also Jaime, you know, I've been in this program for a while, and I really got to see uh, how hard he's been working in the, uh, in the in the back end, you know, behind the scenes to make this happen. And I would say my main takeaway is, you know, stick to your uh, stick to your vision and make sure you you know you do everything you can in your power to achieve your goals. Because everything is possible. 
That's awesome, man. That's awesome. On my way to meet a client right now. Uh, crazy thing is, is you know, once I was coming out to London to, to speak at the summit with Jaime and the rest of the team, realized, hey, my client is actually literally only a couple blocks away. Uh, as you can see here, we decided to, to come meet up. So they make really high quality, sustainable products. So I'm on my way over to their offices to see how they make it, how they design it, talk about the game plan as we move into working with them over the next quarter. Very exciting times, really like in London. Uh, yeah, let's go see them. Whew, just got back from, uh, from that meeting with the clients. Uh, you know, very, very nice people. Really love seeing the brand. They actually, their product is in Selfridges, which is this crazy store here in London and across the UK. I'm walking back to uh, the team, the, the house we're staying at right now. Let's we'll see Jaime and the rest of the team and talk about some some great stuff. So yeah, it's uh, London. You know, if y'all haven't been to London, you have to come visit. It's, uh, it's a crazy place. A lot, of, uh, a lot of businesses, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of agencies. Uh, it's a great place to come and get focused and just get work done. Okay, so we're wrapping up the day with a client call. For this specific client, I'm building up their, uh, their video sales letter and then we're gonna start running their ads. Uh, so I actually went to their uh, location. It's a, it's a pretty cool client. Um, I went to the location, we filmed uh, part of the VSL and now we're, we're essentially putting together the other part of the VSL and we're also gonna go ahead and, and record some ads uh, for them. Physically there, most of the clients I don't actually record the ads for, but for this client specifically, they're, they happen to be in Spain, uh, and so it's just kind of convenient for me, and plus, I think it's a, an incredible location, and maybe I will leave some uh, screenshots and stuff like that on the screen of the location that I was at uh, a few, I think like two weeks, uh, two weekends ago. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and prep the call for around 30 minutes. All right, that call is wrapped up. Uh, it was about uh, an hour or so. Uh, they're really happy, very, very cool bunch of people. Uh, one of the things that I do for my agency nowadays, and you know, I've talked about this uh, uh, a bunch of times on my channel, but I'm at a stage of growth where uh, for me, it makes a lot of sense to take equity in a lot of these companies. And so I'm picking my clients more selectively, taking equity in their brands. Um, obviously, we still have an ad profit deal, so a percentage of their performance, their ad profit. Um, and, and so we take equity uh, and, and that, makes a, that makes a lot more sense uh, especially where I'm at in the journey, where I've got my own e-commerce brands, I've got uh, my, still my clients from my agency that I still actively run. Uh, however, a lot of those are equity uh, agreements and it makes sense to have less clients uh, and really go hard uh, with them and have control over, you know, kind of, kind of have a, like a 360 approach um, when it comes to the marketing and, and uh, you know, I'm a big proponent of that for any type of e-commerce brand. Really. Uh, it's not just about paid ads, but having a 360 understanding of what it makes, you know, what, what is required to grow a brand online. But, that is that for this call and that is that for this vlog. Uh, it's been a, it's been a, you know, hopefully you guys could uh, take a little bit of value away from this. We've got Tal right there, finish up his dinner. Probably he doesn't want to be, uh, he doesn't want to be shown. We've got Tal there, we've got Antonio holding the camera. So we've got the whole school of Ecom team in the building, uh, which has been pretty incredible just to like, you know, really, you know, obviously I, I, I met Antonio physically. I mean, he's come over to, to Madrid a bunch of times, but meeting Tal uh, physically, you know, face to face and just the whole energy at the event at uh you know at, at the place um it's, it's been pretty pretty incredible so i appreciate you for watching this vlog if you enjoyed it drop a massive thumbs up helps out with the algorithm the whole channel i really appreciate it drop in the comments uh, anything that you found of value key takeaways and if you haven't done so already and you want to see more content like this vlog style you know value trainings and all that good stuff uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and i'll see you in the next one peace it's been great coming here it's been fucking great meeting you man there's yeah, something man. about that physical element and Absolutely. we're going to do something in Madrid. We will. I come to Madrid. <laughs> yes. And it was great meeting so many of the mentees and just so many agency owners. And did you enjoy London? Yeah, I did. It's a, it's a completely different world. You know, I'm from Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> completely different. Appreciate you, man. Have a good fight back home. And yeah. uh, drop a like for uh, Tal. <laughs> like and subscribe, all right?